My name is Michael Pierre. Welcome to Mindful Investing. Uh, so today I have a, a quick video on um, what I have here is the correlation, potential correlation that I see in the um, effective federal funds rate being the interest rate that banks pay when borrowing money from the Federal Reserve and um, U.S. government bond yields. So uh, really, well, treasuries essentially, but uh, I guess when, when you're taking into account 30 years, they're really not considered uh, treasuries. Those are more short term, but, uh, you know, same difference. <laughs> so what I wanted to point out here is that every time we have a uh, reduction or a decrease in the bond yields by a significant amount, we have top outs here and then, you know, a, a significant decline that always proceeds, at least historically, uh, proceeds uh, significant rate cuts over the next several years. And I'm only going to go back to the next, uh, the previous, uh, I'm sorry, three crises in the past, including the potential one that we're currently seeing ourselves in right now. So uh, we'll go, you know, 2019, 2020, we'll go to the uh, Great Recession here, and then the dot-com crash. So the first, or the, the, the last top, I'm sorry, uh, was in October slash November of 2018, when the 30-year bond topped out at three and a half percent roughly and at this time we saw that was actually the beginning of the stagnation of the bond yields so october november going up here that was when rates were held for about i don't know five six months and then we started to see a decline in the federal interest rate and again, this was nine months before uh, bond yields topped out nine months before they started to cut rates. Although right when the, the, the uh, bond yields topped out was when they stopped raising interest rates. So um, that is this current cycle we find ourselves in. And uh, the current bond yield actually stopped out at this downward sloping support. And it's currently at you know one point, roughly 1.69, 1.7%. So we'll see what happens in the next coming weeks. Uh, we should see some sort of rebound, at least to the next uh, level of resistance, maybe around 2.4%, 2.5%. But um, if you go back to the next correction, back in 06, 07, we'll see that there was actually a double top in the bond yield. The first top was in uh, May slash June of 2006. So right here, again, when they stopped raising rates. So you'll see right here in uh, May and June, they saw the top in the bond yield, the first top, and the second top right here in June 2007, so one year later. So for this entire year, rates remain the same, the interest rate remained the same. And as soon as intra, the uh, bond yield started to decline, that's when they started cutting rates. And that went on all the way until 2011. So that was a full what, like four years, three and a half, four years of rate cuts and yield decline. So you'll see these these historically have to move in unison because they they trade bonds for Federal Reserve notes, which we call cash, but to them it's just a it's just a note. You know, because it's not backed by anything anymore. But anyway, I won't digress too much. Uh, so again, we go back to the dot com crash, and our top out here was around six and a half, six point seven percent or so. Um, again, you know, I'll point out with these EMAs, every time it's topping out at the same uh, EMA right here, which happens to be, let's see which one it is. It is the 377-day or candle moving average. So in this case, it'd be a 377-week moving average because each of these candles is one week, not one day. Um, so anyway, this top out occurred. Let's see. Drag this up a little. This top out occurred in January of 2000. And if we go to January 2000 on this chart of the federal funds rate, 
that was right right there mm, yeah january 2000 so they actually did end up raising rates just a little bit more maybe what was it about 25 50 basis points um right before our ex not right before but a year before they actually had to start cutting them so it remained stagnant from may through october so aging by about six or so months and they started cutting rates in january of 2001. so if we go to january of 01 here you'll see we're in an obvious decline so what i'm trying to say here is that because these are directly traded for one another from the government to um to the federal reserve they must remain in unison to some level of, of similar value um, so with that in mind uh, also in mind notice that every time these drops occur they never get back to as high as they used to be and the lows are always lower at least in the past three they managed to keep it kind of going up a little bit from the 50s to the 70s and we know you know back then interest rates were up like 18 or so percent uh, at, at the at the top but uh back then also you know we were on a gold standard for a majority of this time so it was just an entirely different world but uh the point i'm trying to make now is that historically that would mean that we we're heading for a multi-year trend of rate cuts potentially going back down to zero and even negative as well as potential negative yielding u.s government bonds which we already know that there's there's trillions and trillions of dollars of negative yielding bonds around the world uh, over 10 trillion i believe i'm not sure the exact amount because it fluctuates between the low to high teens but this is an obvious correlation so keep in mind when, when making your investments and when considering that given the current correction in in the market you know we see the s p you know you see what what's going on um and everyone is flooding to bonds because that's the go-to but uh keep in mind <laughs> that these may not be such a safe haven um at least on the yield perspective you know the price the price actually has not been going up in correlation because in the past three trading sessions i believe bonds have went down or eight to ten twelve fifteen percent each day of the previous week and you know we haven't seen that much increase in the bond price it's only gone what from like up a couple of dollars so the the correlation there just it's just, it's just not there so you know, I can't really say what that is going to mean directly for, for markets, but um, it's just something that I, I think people should be aware of. And uh, yeah, that's all I want to say. Just, uh, you know, keep a close eye, be mindful, and uh, yeah, just have a good day. Thank you.